Welcome to Deeply Disturbing Things, the podcast. I'm Macy. And I'm Naomi. And we're two anxious counselors that like to talk about deeply disturbing things. Welcome. Let's dive in. Yes. How are you? I'm good. Sorry this took so long to set up. We're in a new space. This is our second time videoing, and we decided to move out of my bedroom into the counseling office. And this is actually where we first started recording. It is. So we've kind of come from a full circle. Yeah, it is. We have so much more technology around us than we normally do. For yes. Do you like my wall of plants? You do. You have quite a lot of plants. Those are real. Okay. Are they really? Yeah. Oh, how do you water? Do you have to I have to take them down and water them in the sink. I like them. They're new, so as they like grow, they're going to cascade and it's going to be quite lovely. Lovely. Cheers. Cheers. And we're drinking wine out of paper cups because we're classy like that. So Cool. So, uh, what are your check ins today? So, our very first podcast, you talked about the Fire Festival. Yes, I did. And I just saw it in the news today that the class action lawsuit was settled, and each person that was going to go is getting $7,200. Was that the cost of like admission? Or? I don't think so. I think it was higher, wasn't it? I thought so, because that was like the whole thing. Well, maybe not. <coughs> Excuse me, because I thought it was like. Like a thousand dollars or something. It was a lot of money for a concert. Well, because and then yeah. travel, and then they were stranded and starved. It was supposed to yeah. include like villas and you know mm-hmm. chef made food, and it turned out to be FEMA tents and styrofoam oh, yeah. boxes with it, sad cheap sandwiches. It was all inclusive, but yes, and it included sand. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that we do this live yeah and I think that takes a lot of guts because even if we decide to edit something before we post the recording later like there are people listening to this right now that aren't going to hear everything well there's very few things that we do actually edit um no we edited episode 69 and that was it yeah yeah that's it but I just I just wanted to say cheers to us because I think this takes a lot of guts (laughs) to be one of you know, put yourself out there in this format, live. Like, nobody does that. So, I have a check-in. Okay, what? Okay, so I was looking for a topic, and I ran across this thing that wasn't, like, enough to be a topic, but I found it interesting. Okay, so I was looking into, um, because I had this idea of, like, well, the idea of Wonder Woman, where did that come from? And it kind of took me to this, uh, this path of like Amazon women, this like mm. strong and powerful woman, and I was like, where like where do Amazon women like come from? Like what what's that even like? Are, aren't there real Amazon women, Amazonians? So that's what I was like. Are there Amazonian women who are like you know matriarchal Tall, and, and badass? Yeah, and like super strong or something. I don't know. And um. Really, the there was like this little bit of research at the end that I got to that showed some actual evidence in the 1990s of 150 graves that they found. Of they were they said it was a regular women, so no, nothing superhuman, um, but they were uh, uh, cer- ceramics. Oh, I'm gonna get this wrong. Um, what are you trying to say? Type, it's the population of people. Yeah, you say this word. What? You know I can't say things. (laughs) And I don't have my glasses on. Sexual? (laughs) It's not that word. Oh, that's what (laughs) caught my eye. Soramations? I don't know. I've never heard of that word. It's a. What does it mean? For it's like a group of people that lived in the Amazon. So they're not actually called Amazonians. Okay. Um, So that's for one. Yeah. Something Um, we did in our culture. But it, yeah, it was a group of like women warriors, 150 of them. That they were buried with their weapons. Um, they could tell too. They they rode horseback. They were bow legged from riding horseback so much. Um, one was weighing with her dagger and like a quiver of, of um, arrows that had like 40 uh, bronze tip arrows next to her. I thought it was like super cool. That was really cool. Um, and they were actually like around five six, which was pretty tall. For that era for women. I'm almost five six. Are you? 
I'm five five and a quarter. You're freakishly tall for that era. <laughs> You're too tall. You're welcome. You're an Amazon. It's wonderful. So I I kind of came, the way that I even got to that was like, first it went through like, there's this, maybe this was like a political thing to um, kind of go against like the servitude role of women. And it was more of like a political story and poetry kind of writing to kind of speak against the, Mm. that was like one angle for a while. Another one was that um, Athenian males uh, had seen Amazon men who were beardless um, and that they possibly thought that they were women and they weren't women. That was another take, that that just didn't exist. And then um, the last one was that uh, Athenian males felt that it, or, like, it was a sexualization of women, like the horses were supposed to be like phallic somehow. and. Um, of course, they because like in all in all the stories of Amazon women in like um, the Athen or Athenian right Athenian writing, perhaps good to right? Me. Um, all of that like they all died like really tragically in really tragic ways at the end, and so they they were like thinking that was like unsolved sexual like conflict that the Athenian males had that they put into the stories of writing these women, but then. In the 1990s, that it was only in the 1990s that we actually found this burial site with these 50 huh. or 100. I guess I just women. always assumed it was a group of people that like that was like a, Amazon. a well-known thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Tall female warrior class. I just like couldn't find any information on it, and everything I found is like these little like hypotheses, and then this one piece of evidence. And now we have Glamazons, which are drag queens. <laughs> yeah. They're also yeah. tall. Tall. Powerful. Um, more glitter. A little more glitter. More glitter. <laughs> Less bronze tip arrows. But maybe. I don't know. So, anyways, I just found that interesting. That wasn't that enough for a whole topic, but I just wanted to share my excursion. It's pretty good. It is pretty good. It's pretty good. You didn't pre funk today, like you did last night. I did not. That was special. I don't usually pre funk. Yeah. <laughs> What other check-ins you got? Anything? Well, tomorrow I'm taking you to a disturbing place mm. in Spokane. I'm stoked. And I wish I had a whole list of disturbing places that we're going to go to, but mm-hmm. I only have the one, so I'm hoping... It'll be enough. Yeah, and maybe <laughs> if people are listening that are from Spokane, if you know of a disturbing place, tell me. Let tell me know. secretly. Don't tell what? Lacey. I don't really get to know it. It's those, it's like, those... like the kid, like, duct taping... You see this, right? Like, she's going to steal me. Throwing you in a van and just taking you where we're going to go. You know, I won't lie. I kind of like the idea, too. Um, Just, like, this (laughs) powerlessness of, I guess I end up where I end up. I don't have to make any... And I like the power. Yeah, I don't (laughs) have to make any choices for, like, an hour or two. It's just great. But you're going to like Taurus. It's going to be cool. It's really fun. I'm excited. You told me to bring my skates. Yes. It's a combo activity. I like it. Because there's a skate trail right nearby. Well, now that we have a YouTube channel, we're going to totally... Oh, yes. Follow us on our brand new YouTube channel. Yeah. I subscribed. I was our first subscriber. <laughs> well, because like, I kept it hidden because I never unlocked its full powers. Yes. Yeah. So, cool. And let us know if you like seeing us in action. Yes, yes. Apparently, Pod. Are we supposed to look at the camera or is this a. No, we went over this last time. We look at each other. Um, but occasionally, can I glance at the camera? You can, like, look at it. I can okay. see you there. It's this is this like we're talking to the people. Yeah, this is when we're talking to the people. This and this is, is when we're talking to each other. Yeah. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have no experience in the entertainment industry. We really are the two least likely people to start a podcast. <laughs> Or be on any filming. Of and so I broke my, I have no headphones. I have no headphones because I broke mine. Yeah. Um, you also threw your glasses at me. <laughs> start. We were late and that was my fault. Um, Tell them what you did. Well. You deserved that punishment. I was trying to get on to your awful Wi-Fi that wasn't working. And then, and then she goes, well, that's the box over there. And I said, Oh, I unplugged it. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, that's weird. None of the lights are on. She's like, oh, oh. did we need that unplugged it? Oops. And so I had to throw something at you. You deserve that. Well, uh, yeah, it was 
Yeah. Um, I'll save that clip for everybody so you can see her being violent towards me in case I need to reuse that Oh, you were filming her. that? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Obviously. Well, that ties into my topic. Oh, good. Cool. So I get to go first today. Okay. That's um, fine, because mine doesn't have math. Mine doesn't have math either. Thank goodness. Um, mine, I'm going to need a lot of your input. I've got input to give, okay. maybe. Depends on the topic. So I picked my topic based on our our uh, crime board that we did mm. on our lack of alien topics. <sighs> that was my shame. That is your bucket. You failed. You I failed know. so hard. You so know what, hard. though? The one I presented on was the most believable thing that had a lot of substance to it. I think that's why I picked that. Just you wait. Okay. Just you wait. Bring it on. So I'm going to talk about Betty and Barney Hills alien oh, abduction. Oh, yes. I've heard about this. Yeah. So this was like one of the most prominent um, abduction stories that came out that kind of led to how it was talked about then on. Will there be probing? Are there? They didn't, the anals. They did not identify probing. That's actually how my search started. You searched <laughs> anal probing? I, I'm sure I'm on so many lists <laughs> at this point. Last week I was... Well, when I was making the video part, I was looking at pictures on your topic. So I'm looking up like sawed off shotgun and um, we're on so many watch lists. Anti government, right yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like every list possible. Okay, so um, is that them? Yeah, this is them. So they're a biracial couple. Um, Betty and Barney are Betty really and cute Barney. couple. Isn't it? <laughs> Betty and Barney Hill. It's like an adorable. It's really sweet. Yeah. It's so, I'm going to start with just setting the scene. Okay. Is it chasing us? That thought coursed through Betty and Barney Hill's minds as they drove down the empty, winding country road in New Hampshire's White Mountains. It was September night in 1961. They hadn't seen a car for miles, but there was a strange light in the sky that was following them. Da, da, da. When they finally got home to Portsmouth at dawn, they were far from relieved. They felt dirty. Their watches stopped. Barney's shoes were strangely scuffed, and Betty's dress was ripped. They were two hours. There were two hours of the drive that they don't remember. Um, and I just want to say that my father and I had a moment like that where we can't remember like a chunk of time in the car, and. Could have happened. I don't remember. It could have happened. It could have happened. And they couldn't remember anything when they got home. Like, it wasn't like they went home and said, we were abducted by aliens. So that's where it kind of gets a little interesting. Um, and I'll need some of your, your feedback on where this okay, goes. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So they went to a psychiatrist is what they did after this happened. Oh, because that turned out Which, to be a mistake. Well, you have to kind of think, like... Um, um, you have to think that, like, in why would you go to a psychiatrist after something like this that didn't really happen? I don't know. Just throwing that out there. It's not something people typically do. So they did that because they thought they were going crazy, right? Is that why? Yeah, I mean, I mean, not like they were going crazy, but basically, like, they were losing sleep. They were uh, um, having some PTSD. Yeah, they were having a lot of like physical symptoms um, and like trauma-related symptoms that they couldn't really explain. So that's why they went mm -hmm. to the psychiatrist. Sachi, I wasn't sleeping in the car. That's not what happened. <laughs> um, okay, so with the help of the psychiatrist, psychiatrist, the couple eventually revealed a startling story. Um, they called them greys for the aliens. They're called the greys. The grey ones. Yeah. They had large eyes and they walked the couple to a metallic disc that was wide as their house was. So very big metallic disc um, in a field. Once inside, they examined the couple and erased their memories. So that's what was reported. How do they do that? Um, is well, they, it like in Men in Black where they just do the zappy light thing? So or is it like in Arrested Development? Is it a forget-me-now pill? I think they kind of phrased it like it was like 
they had a pretty in-depth involvement, and I'll walk through that, with the aliens, um, and then it was just like all of a sudden they don't remember something again, and then they wake up. That's okay. okay. Um, so this whole experience actually kicked off an Air Force inquiry. Um, there was a secret initiative called Project Blue Book that came from this that involved uh, looking into alien sightings. Um, and that's actually like around the whole country. So the Hills Road Trip was a spontaneous break that they chose to do. Um, he actually, um, he used to be in the Air Force. That's what he did before. Um, and she worked, uh, and I think currently at this time he was working at a post office like 60 miles away, so they did a very long drive back and forth. Um, they went on this trip immediately after work for both of them, and she worked um, as a child welfare worker. So both of them had very hard jobs, and then they went on this trip. So some people said like sleep deprivation may have been a cause, like so they go through these things as well as possible mm -hmm. alternatives. Um, Different theories. Yeah, exactly. So after 16 months of marriage, Betty and Barney saw this trip through Montreal and Niagara Falls as their delayed honeymoon. They oh. left so impulsively that they had no time to go to the bank before it closed. They got in their car with less than $70 in their pocket. So, I mean, okay. That was probably a, a more of back then. Yeah. Than now. Yeah, let's gas money. Let's gas and food. Um, as they drove, they saw a strange light um, in the sky. At first, it looked like a falling star. Uh, as it got brighter, Barney started trying to um, like calm her down because he was like, he was a World War II vet, so he's like, you know, it's probably this, it's probably that, mm -hmm. and don't worry about it. Uh, but after a while, he actually got concerned. So they pulled over um, because he was like speeding up, slowing down, and they said that it was like pacing with them. Scary. Yeah, could you imagine that? What would you do if you had... Would I, like, try to out? outrun it, or would I stop and try to get a video? I'm not sure. Right, really? I feel like <laughs> you would stop. Well, Would you really keep going? Do you remember, what was it, like, two years ago when I saw that UFO when I was driving down to uh -huh. WSU? And I watched it and watched it and watched it, and I was driving, but, like, really slow. As soon as I got out my camera, it was gone. So... A lot of people have said that that happens, like they yeah. know when they're being watched. Mm -hmm. And so well, I might have wanted to not disturb the moment and like keep going. And just see what, and just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So they, he ended up um, pulling over, but he said, Barney said that it felt like cat and mouse. Like it was like almost kind of toying with them. And he finally, when he stopped, um, he actually wandered out into um, the grass area at the stop and was going to go look for what the light was coming from. And so she stayed in the car during this. Um, and during that, uh, he he's like, oh, my God, what is this thing? He sees it, he says it's bigger than a house. Um, and then that's the part where they said like, their memories were really hard they couldn't remember what happened after that point. So they saw it, they recognized that part, and then no memories. And they're both reporting the same experience. Yes, together. Um, so that can give it more credibility, I would think. Well, in this, um, but on the other hand, other people have argued that they called them the grays as being a mix between black and white, and that that could have some symbolic reasoning for them being a biracial couple and having, because that that was somehow symbolic for them. And so a lot of people had a lot of worries about the psychiatrist and having, um, and we've talked about this a little bit before, but having memories evoked that aren't true. Oh, is like a thing in therapy. planting false memories? Yeah, yeah. So, and obviously there's not that much information out there about like their actual sessions, uh, confidential, so I don't know that. Yeah, one. I want to see the transcripts. <laughs> yes, let's do a... <laughs> A records request. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a reenactment. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So once they were back home after that whole night, they're trying to make sense of it. Um, he felt compelled to examine his lower half of his body, um, and he felt like there was just like this presence, like, and he just like, yeah. Um, so that's that kind of. <laughs> 
Well, he just he a felt like in his pants. He felt like somebody had like touched him and had like been in his business. Business. Ooh. So, I'm but he's to the part about the pro. Getting there. I mean, not pro exactly, but Betty suffered from uh, nightmares. Um, Barney actually ended up developing an ulcer and cancer or not cancer, anxiety. Um, ulcer, had an anxiety disorder from this, and they went and got uh, mental health. So Benjamin Simon was a psychiatrist who specialized in hypnosis. So that's who they saw for this. Um, and they did this through uh, months of weekly sessions, and they pieced together what they had seen after they had met the Greys and started walking towards the ship. So, mm -hmm. once inside, this is what their memories revealed after their therapy sessions. Like, are those memories you necessarily want to I don't marry? Know. I don't know. I mean, I mean, if something bad happens. I could see how maybe like a, a hypnotherapist might think like oh, we need to like uncover these things to get to the root of it so you can heal. You know, that's a little because nineteen sixties, that's very Freudian era. Yeah. I'd be like, maybe your brain is protecting you from something you don't want to know. Yeah. It's doing its job. Yes, exactly. So this is what they described from their memories. Once inside, the hills were separated, taking turns on an examination room table. There were curved walls, large lights hanging from the ceiling. Each was asked to climb onto a metal table. The table was short. Barney remembered his legs hung over the sides. During the examinations, the beings removed Betty and Barney's clothes, plucked strands of their hair, took clippings of their nails, and scraped their skin. Each sample was placed on a clear material, not unlike a glass. You're going to make Betty's and Barney's. It's my whole planet full. Needles were used and connected to long wires probing their heads, arms, legs, and spines. One large needle around four to six inches long was inserted into Betty's belly button. Ooh. Inside the belly what button. What are they doing? So they said it so she said it was a pregnancy test. Mm-hmm. The pregnancy test, she said, left her twisting in pain throughout um We talked about how the belly button should not be poked at. Okay, weird connection. Another topic I almost went into and I didn't realize this till just this moment. I l was looking up like weird body parts and I totally was like reading about the belly button. There's like over 65 different bacteria that grow in your belly button, by the way. I try to scrub mine thoroughly in the shower. And they say it's because most people just like ignore it. I can see that. Um, yeah, there's. I learned some stuff about belly buttons today. <laughs> Do you have a pierced belly button? No. No, I'm very grossed out by belly buttons. I really don't like them. I feel like if you push them too hard, all your guts are gonna fall out. <laughs> don't enjoy it. No, I I think it's like the end of a balloon tied off. You know. <laughs> yeah, it just freaks me out. And a and ties and knots, and yeah, everything's just gonna spill out onto the table. Do you have an in or an outie? We talked about this. I used to have a very uh, adorable uh, itty, uh, and then an after I got pregnant, it went outie, and then it didn't go all the way back itty. So now I got. That's half what half. I read, like it like pops belly belt. Yeah, it's like a the turkey's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you now have an Audi. No, it's half. half. It like didn't go in all the way. Well they said the most um like neglected belly not neglected, but like people don't like them as much are the um full Audi and the very regressed any where it's like really deep in like a tunnel. So like a little cave. it's like not just it like just because you have an innie belly button doesn't give you an in. Um, if it's too grossly in, it's gross too. No, I think mine was <laughs> the perfect amount of it. And I have had my belly button. My belly button is not pierced now, but I have pierced it five times in the past. Well, in the 90s, that's what you do. It was cute. Yeah, that is, they say, like a erogenous zone as well, like sexually. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody. Like it up in your belly button yeah. and your 65 bacteria. That's cool. <laughs> All right, where were we? I don't know. Um, okay, yeah, so Barney and Betty. Or like doing any of those like bachelorette games with whipped cream or shots. Shot, yeah. shot, shot, shot. I don't need shots in my belly button. I mean, it's just. <laughs> I don't like, want to suck them out of anyone else's belly button. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it just sucks most. I don't know how clean they are. For the person doing the sucking. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, yeah, so Barney and Betty said that they saw the leader, like, to the side, so they were able to identify, like, the leader of the Greys. Um, after Betty's examination ended, the beings rushed back um, to a different room, and they were excited. They discovered that Barney's teeth could be removed, because he had false teeth. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, how did pull his teeth out? Yeah, I thought that too. Um, because he had false teeth. Um, so... Betty said she remembered laughing at that, explaining dentures to them. So she then explained dentures to them. So was there actual like dialogue back and forth, yes. like conversation? Yes. She said later, alo- later on, alone with the leader, Betty asked where the craft had flown, admitting she knew little about the universe. The being joked with her, saying, if you don't know where you are, there wouldn't be any point in telling you where I am. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Later under hypnosis, she drew a star map shown to her on the ship. In 1965, the story was then picked up by a Boston newspaper that they had um, been abducted, and it kind of spread from there. Did they speak so English back and forth, or was yeah, it like yeah, she telepathy? Said, she said it was like she spoke verbally, and they spoke back. Do you think that was like a trick? I like mean, they were really speaking their alien language, and were somehow able to make it so she perceived yeah. it as English. I mean, if it if if it was aliens, I definitely think it would be some sort of like transcriber, like I don't know. Google Translate. Yeah, just out their mouth. Yeah, like on the fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they could like because push a neck button. If you're coming all the way from some other place, some other universe, Mm -hmm. or some other part of the universe. You are so much beyond anything we can even comprehend as far as technology. Right. So I'm sure they could do lots of things. I mean, maybe, or else they just are good at space crafting. (laughs) Aw. Maybe they're not in a Google voice. I don't know. Was she pregnant? No. Seems like that would be dangerous for the baby. To stab a needle in there? Yeah, I agree. So this this whole kind of model of talking about um, like the spaceships being flat and round started coming around after this time. There were a few before this, but um, this was the like most prevalently media saucer yeah. shape. Mm-hmm. So there's different shapes like that. The shape is popular. There's like mm-hmm. the Tic Tac one. I've seen like the red lights, like the there's like in my mom's house because they're up like on top of the mountain, and there's like these three little red triangle lights that my siblings and I were watching one night when we were like laying out on a trailer because we do move in nowhere, and um and they were like rotating and spinning like above us for a long while, and eventually they just disappeared. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what that was. The one I saw in Colfax was like a big black box just sitting there. It's in the sky. Was it, a, it wasn't like a robot droid? Well, I mean, it was big. And it was How just, big? Like, are you talking like handheld? No, because it was like in the distance in the sky. Okay. And I mean, I don't are you talking want aircraft? to estimate. It was just sitting Station? there, though. Yeah, in the sky. Just square. It wasn't moving. It was just sitting there. It was like rectangular. Oh, you just reminded me, um, there was a, a university that had called the wildlife uh, people because they were concerned there was an animal trapped in the tree outside of one of their dorms, and the animal people came, and it was a croissant. <laughs> I heard about that! <laughs> Somebody had, like, in the tree. I saw a picture, and I'm like, I can see how I thought it was an animal, but it's definitely, like, a croissant. It's definitely a croissant. Why <laughs> one of those delicious Costco croissants. Right? <laughs> Okay, so it's, you know, it might be a croissant. <laughs> might be an alien, who knows? My son says he saw UFOs like three days ago. Ooh, where at? He's out in the sky. He's looking at them from my house. He's making a bunch of sketches. Oh. And they're above airplanes. Like, he's watching the airplanes go. Mm-hmm. And they stood there for a long time. They were, like, spinning. Mm-hmm. And it left. There's, like, a whole bunch of them. And that's, like, with so much, like, air travel now, like, I feel like it could happen all the time and people wouldn't really pay any mind now. Where, like, maybe, like, back in the 60s, you're going to notice it more. Yeah. Um, then we, I don't even pay attention to things in the sky anymore. Yeah, and this was daytime, so it made it, they were actually really hard to see because they're mm-hmm. so far away. He called me, he's like, Mom, are those birds? 
And I'm like, what? And I was like, it took me a long time to even see what he was looking at. And I'm like, I think those are too high up for birds. And why are they yeah. spinning? And then I had to like go back to work. And then you saw aliens. I checked in later and like a lot more had had to Did you get probed? I I may have. I hope not. Okay, okay. So just to kind of build I on think this. it's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> Would you like to expand? <laughs> no. Okay. It just depends on the person, place, and situation. Okay. I mean, alien? That situation? No, probably not. Okay, all right. Well, I don't know. I mean, if that's my only chance to experience alien life, so you're making or to like <laughs> see behind the veil and like, okay, you you do one probe mm-hmm. and we'll tell you everything, all the truths. Wait, no. are, you, are you being held ransom for sexual <laughs> probing for information? <laughs> this is a very specific situation. Very do you need specific. to talk to a hypnotist? Hypnotist? <laughs> Why are the aliens so into butts? I mean, that's the bigger question. Why are people so into butts? They're the ones that's talking about it. I haven't heard one alien talk about that. Butts are very interesting. I mean, yeah, but there was no butts in this. It was there's no butts. There was no butts. Mm-mm. No butt probing. Um. So just going into like the human brain and like the other side of this is people who say that it wasn't true that aliens don't exist. There's that side of the argument. Um. So according to research, one of the strongest predictors of false recalling, at least, is vivid imagination. So there's this kind of connection that people will make that, well, if you have a vivid imagination and you're put in a position like a, uh, like a hypnotherapy session and you're going to bring about information, yeah, you're probably going to bring about more vivid imagery to that mm-hmm. than if you weren't into it. And most people, they said, like, if you believe in aliens, you're more likely to believe in tarot cards and kind of that um, alt culture with that. Bits. Yeah. <laughs> I fit the profile, I guess. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm <laughs> feeling like I'm describing you, so I'm trying to go a little bit <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, it was actually ruled out from that, that blue book I told you, from the government book. They crossed it off. I mean, but like not, they can't prove it wrong. It's just... Yeah, but the been? government has, there's a lot of things, I mean, something that's happened recently, mm-hmm. where there's a UFO alongside a, was a commercial jet, it was like a week ago or two weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, there's things that happen that can't be explained. Well, and that's, I mean, the universe is so big that to even think And there's probably more than one, also. We're definitely not the smartest if there's more. No. They Definitely just, not. I mean, or or we are, and and so that's... either it's other life that has developed independently of us, or it's us in another time. Yeah, I mean, I do th- like you know, talking like parallel dimensions. So. No, like way future, maybe. Or oh, way like past, just developed. Like, more. It's just yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get, to me, it's, we put a lot of meaning to, like, well, we're smart and people, people are the model, um, but I don't think that necessarily would be true. We have a lot of flaws. I mean, belly buttons, so, you so know. many flaws. Earwax? Right? Like, what is the point of earwax? I mean, just to keep dirt out of your ears so you don't but if you get damage too much, your brain. Like me, then you Are you a hear. lot of earwax person? Apparently. Yeah, this is new. This is a new development is it? in my life. Yes, the apparently I have a what lot cause of earwax. It, does stress cause ears earwax? I heard that it's like, yeah, like something that could be related to these times that we're living in. Oh my goodness, are they saying that COVID causes earwax problems? Because I'm going to have problems. I don't know if it's COVID necessarily. Is COVID the new virus biology? <laughs> I'm just saying I have a lot of earwax. And I had to get it removed, and I'm sorry, nurse, that I had to help with that. Ew. I so apologize they the do, whole time. I'm like, I'm so wait, sorry. Do they this like so have gross. to do more than the swab? Do they like do the drain thing? They don't do a swab. That actually pushes it in. Okay. This is I, what they do. I'm sorry, I've never. This done is what this they do. I, I just had this done like last Tell week. Tell us, because this is deeply disturbing. 
It is deeply disturbing. <laughs> First of all, I didn't know I had an earwax problem. It's so that was that. That was embarrassing. <laughs> it's <just my> earwax. <laughs> I'm like, don't look at it! Ew! <laughs> so what they do is they take this Gross. squirt bottle of warm water and they just wait, drill wait, it. Wait, I, I feel like this matters. Warm water or yeah. warm water? Warm water. And they drill it into your ear like hard and it feels so uncomfortable. Like you just feel it. It feels like it's in your face. Like in your eyes. But it's in, in your, your face. Ear. It's in your head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they just drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it while you have to help. You have to like hold a cup under your ear. I don't want to work when I go to the doctor's office. And like, I'm already traumatized. <laughs> Capture the earwax and drippings. You so it, oh god! No, it's so, so they fucking gross. Flood it in and then it floods out. And it floods out. Do you have to like tilt your head and, like, a little bit? Drain like, it tilt like, your head. like into yeah. my wine cup. And then like occasionally, they have to like stop and look in to see if they got it. And then they have to like go dump Did the you thing. And I'm like, like I would, a little cup. You don't want to keep it as a key. No, thing. I would avert my eyes because <laughs> I did not want to see my gross earwax in that like water cup. So. Yeah. Feel like a lot. Once you pulled it away, I would like not like because it's gross. <laughs> the doctor assured me it's by far the grossest thing they have to do, but I still I doubt that. felt very self conscious about it. Like and they had two medical students in there like learning during my whole thing. So. <laughs> it's gross. I, don't know. I feel like my answer would always be no. I was like, hey, can this person watch? Mm-mm. No, it was two. Also, I mean, did they ask your permission? Yeah, they did. Why did so you sure. Why? Bring him in. Was that before you knew? I'm very nervous at the doctor. Are you scared of authority, so you just say yes? I am. This is actually only my second time in like ever since I was a kid. Really? Like, like an actual checkup. I've mm-hmm. usually just gone to the doctor when I was sick. Mm-hmm. But um, now they're like making people do that to like get medication refills. You have to go every year. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, so. <laughs> Got it, because you may have an earwax problem. And no, that it. was my biggest problem with me. Everything else, I'm healthy. I'm all good. Good. How often do you have to drain your ears? Well, apparently next year, I guess, when we go back, Oh. Okay. we'll see the situation. She's like, long time. She's like, there is an over-the-counter thing you can do. I'm like, yeah, I probably won't. <laughs> It's like one of those. Why should I do it when they can do it for me? It's like the neti pots that you oh, like, I don't do flush. That. That's like, gross. Doesn't that give you like? Hypothermia. Well, no. I think there's issues that pneumonia, if, pneumonia. if you do it wrong and it like goes back in. Yeah. I just don't want to spend that much intimate time with my snot. It's a lot of snot. It's yeah. like earwax. Like I, I'm not a fan of it. I just want it out and gone. I don't look in the tissue. Like go. I don't. Part of me feels like it's there for a reason. So maybe it needs to just do its thing. Like maybe you have a lot of dirt coming in your ears. A lot of COVID germs going at your ears right now. So you may need more. Like you're maybe you're creating a gelatin around your body, and you just disrupted that alienness that was happening from your past. I could hear it way better though after. <laughs> I was wondering if that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was really loud. If it only improved your eyesight. Uh, yeah, I can't see anything. She needs a glass. Can't see shit. I don't know. I have them back. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I feel like aliens could do better. Um, than using people as a model, just in my opinion. What do you mean using people as a model? Like trying to create people through well, their like, phono flippings? Well, like I feel like when people, like even just like when you see like the typical alien picture, like they have two legs and they have two arms and they look like kind of just like an odd human that's blue. Yeah, they're all humanoid. Yeah, and I don't agree with that. I think it would probably be like, yeah, we'd find like some weird like toad looking thing and that's the first alien we see um then it's probably not there's probably a lot of that out there yeah yeah those creatures just me, don't have the technology to come visit us yeah and so to me like that absolutely has to exist exist out in the universe we just can't reach it um as far as is anything advanced enough to travel i mean we haven't been able to do it so maybe not maybe so but maybe not if it's an infinite world scenario than there is and maybe they just don't like us and we have to accept being rejected by aliens we're not cool enough i mean they if they're following us and like run away from us why aren't we taking the hint i think they're here more than we know 
and they have been for a long time. More. That's just what I think. Saying that with their calm confidence. I just, I know we're not, there's no way that we're the only life in the universe. Like, that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I don't think so either. But it's I too just vast. Think, I just think we're too conceited to think that they would be so interested in us. I don't know. Well, I think it's not maybe just us. I think it's like E.T. Let me bring up one of your favorites. Thanks for that. E.T., the extra <laughs> testicle, who I love, who Missy hates. <laughs> that was the extra like, they <laughs> weren't just interested in us. They were going all around collecting botanical samples. Well, we're in just one stop. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You can see that. And the poor E.T. got left behind. Right. The whole feet scrabbling. Oh, gosh. Ah, I'm bringing up specific scrabble, scrabble, scrabble. flashback to the nightmare. The counselor here intentionally triggering me <laughs> because she's a jerk. <laughs> if you're a future client of Naomi, you just know she may do this on purpose. It's called exposure therapy. You should know. I do know. <laughs> Thanks. You need to bring E.T. over here now that we're recording over here. You need to bring what? The E.T. stuffy over here. No, you don't. You can stay far away. And I'll just have it right behind the pillows behind you. No, I don't like it behind you. Just said that I got <laughs> chills in. So. Okay. I don't know what for those, for those that don't know. I have like a, I'm scared of ET, and um, I have really bad nightmares for like repeating nightmares about ET, like murdering my family. I feel like this red vision, and I would hear it like running and go like, like running through the house. That's the scrabbling. And I would see through the ET's eyes as it like murdered my dog, murdered my family. And he I would is a gentle creature. No. Vegetarian. No, he's not. Lies. Lies. Reese's Pieces loving. So he is kept in the basement until he kills everybody. That's what happens. That's your nightmare? I'm going to literally have this nightmare tonight because you brought it up. So All thank right. you. I appreciate it. <sighs> so that's our topic for today. I wanted to dive into what do you know? more aliens. I haven't got to drink or much of talking. So I'm excited for you to talk so I can drink one. Um, this is the fun trail. Okay. I will dive into one topic. And I do hope you know that you need to do more aliens in the future. I did this to open the door for you. Okay. It has to be, I mean, you know how it is when we do a topic. There has to be enough there it has to, to actually. Hit. Present on. Like I said, I went through belly buttons. It can't be just like, Amazon. oh, I saw a sign in the sky. Like, it has to be. And then I saw this and I was like, oh, actually, like, that's pretty interesting because I could imagine myself in, in that position. I would be royally freaked out. There's no, this story had a lot. Yeah. Okay, well, if you request it, I will bring it. Did you see the Tiger King docuseries last year? I love the Tiger King I'm going to talk about the Tiger King Doctor series. Okay, I'm going to get comfortable. So I'm glad you saw it because this is going to be really awkward if you didn't. So it, it came out a year ago. It came out, it coincided with lockdown. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people watched this. It was insanely popular. I binge watched it. I mean, that mullet, though, obviously. <laughs> that mullet, yeah. And. So something in the news just came up about this. And so I'm like, you know what? That would be a good topic. And mm -hmm. by now, I won't be giving spoilers because if you haven't watched it by now, then you yeah. don't deserve to watch it. Well, that's rude. But uh, <laughs> go watch it because it was pretty fun. No, it's really good. Um, Carol Black. So this was a true crime documentary. And they filmed for five years. So what we saw was the culmination of five years of filming. It, and it wasn't, oh, it kind of wasn't filmed like a crime documentary, though. No. You know why, though? Because it didn't start out as a true crime documentary. It started mm -hmm. out as an expose into the world of people that keep exotic animals. Oh, okay. That makes sense. They started out investigating with people that keep reptiles. Mm -hmm. And while they were filming, they ran across somebody that had, like, a freaking snow leopard in the mm -hmm. middle of the summer in the back of the of van. And so they were like... They kind of wanted to pursue that and look into that. So mm -hmm. this thing kind of unfolded as they were filming, which is very interesting. Like a lot of different um, forks in the roads happened. 
So, um, the creators, they stumbled onto this world of people that keep these big exotic cats. And that then they learned about the Tiger King. And things just unfolded from there. I know he sold underwear. He <laughs> did. And played his own country music songs that he didn't actually play. Is your dad in Oklahoma? Yes. So this not set right in Oklahoma. There. So oh. Tiger King. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so the setting is Oklahoma. Yeah. Oh. oh, there's so much context now. <laughs> so here's some of the main characters in the story. There's the Tiger King. Uh, he went by Joe Exotic. Mm-hmm. It's Ash or um, Joel Maldonado. Um, he was a gay, gun-loving, mullet-sporting owner of the GW Zoo. He was born in 1963. And if you need a refresher, oh, I remember. that's his face. Yeah, that's the exact face I remember. So he's got a bleach blonde mullet, a stash, loves the tags. Another character was Carol Baskin. Frank Baskin. This Carol is Joey's Baskin. nemesis. She runs Big Cat Rescue. She thinks she is fixing the problem created by people like Joe Exotic. She only wears cat prints. And here's a picture of <laughs> Carol Baskin and her husband Howard. Carol Baskin, who does some of the same stuff as everybody else, but just labels it something different. Then there's John Finley. This is Joe's husband of 11 years. They met when John was just out of high school. He had a real bad case of meth mouth during the filming. Can I ask a question? Yes. Was she on Dancing with the Stars? Yes. (laughs) There's John Finley with his two teeth. Probably his favorite teeth. Oh, the best two. Um, there was also Doc Antle. He was in there. He wasn't a main character. He was kind of a side character. Mm-hmm. He ran a more sophisticated rival wildlife experience. Yeah, that was the creepy dude, right? He operated out of South Carolina. His place was called Myrtle Beach Safari. He had several girlfriends, sister yeah, wives. That's what I remember, yeah. Um, and he had a PhD in some kind of mystical science. Here's a picture of him with some of the... Mm-hmm. The ladies. Yeah. He made them get boob jobs. He made them dress sexy. Very, I remember when I was watching that part of it, I was like, this is such a cult. Like, because, like, if you think about, like, especially people in that age range of, like, ending high school and young adultish, but, you know, people who had the tiger print folders. What were the folders? Like, the pictures? Yeah, yeah. Like, those people that loved animals and um, had tiger print things. That was a, that was definitely a thing, then. Huh? Animal prints are still in today. Somewhat. They're definitely not, like, the style. Two years ago, animal prints made a big comeback. I mean, they never really totally go away. I mean, not for some people. <laughs> I'm trying to scan my work up right now at home, like, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I don't think I actually do at the moment. But I I have had some leopard. I don't think I've ever. I've had some leopard here and there. Definitely had the PG folders. (laughs) (laughs) So Rick Kirkham, he's another person. He was the producer of Joe Exotic TV. He used to be a reporter on Inside Edition. And he was addicted to crack cocaine at that time. Wow. His claim to fame that he interviewed... One of the Bush presidents, while high. <laughs> How else can you do that? Interview? Another character was on the show was Staff, an animal keeper. He had his arm tore off by a tiger during the filming of the documentary. That was freaky. That actually triggered me to watch like a couple different um, like people attacked by a tiger or lion videos, which was pretty traumatic. I watched one where, like, they were on a safari, and this dude gets out to take a picture, and he gets, like, mauled and eaten by a lion. It's scary. They are big. They're very big. Their paws, like, the size or bigger than my head. No, they're really big. Crazy. So let's dive in. Joe Exotic, which is this magician name, 
Is he a magician? Can we call him a magician? He was a magician. Wait, like a legit magician? Yeah. I mean, that was just one thing he did. He did many things. That was just one mm. side hustle. Gotcha. Um, yeah, he, many trades. Yes. Mm. He owned and ran the GW Zoo. I can't remember what that stands for. It doesn't matter. So he had this like ragtag crew of misfits that were extremely loyal to him. Most had no experience working with big cats prior to coming to the zoo. Wasn't a lot of like con, like ex convict type folk? Um, more later there was more felons, but mm-hmm. you know I don't think Joe would have turned anybody away if they wanted to work for him and you know fit into his philosophy. Mm-hmm. Joe filmed every minute of his day. He was the star of his own show. Um, as you mentioned, he had music videos that he filmed with him lip syncing mm-hmm. to songs such as I Saw a Tiger. Which is awful. <laughs> he had DVDs you could buy in the zoo gift shop of his his videos. And man thongs that are tiger print. <laughs> yes. Um, he'd experienced a lack of acceptance through being gay within his own family and the community, which led to depression and a suicide attempt when he was here. Doc and Joe Exotic, so Doc Ansel, the one of the ladies, they spin the purpose of their up-close wildlife experiences as being for wildlife conservation. Because they say if people form personal connections with big cats and they get to cuddle the little babies, then they will make they will become wildlife protectors. That's sort of how they spin what they're doing as being for the good. According to Doc, it takes ten thousand dollars a year to feed a tiger quality food, and he said that's what he feeds his tigers, and he charges a premium admission to his park. According to Joe, <laughs> he could feed a tiger for three thousand a year. So how did he, how does he do that? I know, I know, I know. Well, you see, you saw it already. Well, I can kind of put a different reframe on it. It's a bit like at one point in my life, I remember my mom taking us to her friend's bread, and they gave us expired bread once. Oh, like an outlet. Yeah. Kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Joe and his crew, they got cows that died in feedlots. They got deer from the highway patrol that had been hit on the highway. Yeah, that's not comparable. I didn't eat that deer from the road. And most memorable in the docuseries, they got big, giant Walmart mart trucks full of expired meat. Yeah, that's, that's more like Big, it. giant <laughs> trucks. Yeah. And it was not only used to feed the animals, but it was also given to staff as part of their pay. They, they like, grilled it and like had, they sold it. They did. At the their, public, which yeah. is probably illegal. Probably. Probably, <laughs> probably got charged for that. <laughs> now, I do want to say I think there's a lot of food waste in this country because it's it just expired past its date and it may be perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. But um, given yeah, like all if, what we know from Joe, I don't know if that was always the case. Yeah, I mean, like if I have like a meat that I have froze and I've had it since I purchased it and it goes like, a week past expired, like, I'll still unplug the meat and eat it. Like, I won't even think about that, but I wouldn't, like, if I saw it in the store, oh, it's a week expired, you know? Right. Like, a reaction. But it still might be, I mean, okay, you just don't know. Yeah. I mean, those are based on, like, estimates. Mm -hmm. So, that's that's why I have a sniffer, so we can sniff if something's rotten and know not to eat it. Actually, I I do that, um, I think with bread is, like, my, I always smell bread to see if it smells like mold. (laughs) <laughs> no white smell. My dad fed me mm-hmm. moldy bread once to give me penicillin when I was sick <laughs> when I was a child. Did that work? Did that cure your I infection? Mean, I think so. Oh, you know, that's we, smart. Need, we need a little penicillin boost. There's just a little bit. It was intentional to give little. me penicillin. That's smart. Yeah. Good for the immune system. It was better than the Advil. We are not recommending you eat moldy bread. No, don't people. do that. Don't also crush Advil into peanut butter and put on a cracker. Literally the worst thing I've ever had in my mouth. Ew. It was awful. <laughs> He's like, it's fine. And then he takes a bite and spits it in his face. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Joe's staff only made about $150 a week. 
Um, and they live there on the ground, you know, it's a pretty rough living situation. There's not many places to live there, to be honest, from what I've seen. So Joe is a magician, as I mentioned. That's what you do. Magic. He magicianized. And he performed with his big cats. And this is how Carol Baskin first got a line on Joe. Mm -hmm. So she started a campaign to shut down his magic shows. Um, yeah, because it would be entertainment. Right. But Joe had other ways to make money. He had these baby tigers at the zoo, so they're a big draw. Because people would come, you could they're hold the baby horrible. tigers, you could take photos with the baby tigers. The problem is the baby tigers grow up and become... Big you know, 500 pound adult tigers like, that aren't as big of a draw and cost a shit ton to feed and. You're house. describing human babies? <laughs> <laughs> it's both. Both aren't. It's cute later. <laughs> then not being able to say words as well means a little. <laughs> <laughs> so there are more tigers in captivity in the US than living free anywhere in the world. Sad, sad super sad. So I get very sad about yeah, animal stuff. Yeah. I haven't done a lot of animal stuff just because it really makes me feel very sad. Um, Joe stated if animal rights activists ever entered his property, it was going to be another Waco. Mm -hmm. So this is a mm -hmm. link to my last episode. Which was a link to your actual episode? Yes. Yeah. He had a pact with his staff that if anything went wrong they would shoot each other. They had their names on bullets. I mean, that's ridiculous. Like, okay, really? Well, he was very territorial, very For paranoid, but with like, reason, like, he was himself attacked. all the time. He's, yes. like, the most public-private person I've ever Yes, seen. it's a huge dichotomy. Yeah, it's odd. It's very um, odd. Carol Baskin, Carol Baskin, Got oh, PETA to target Joe Exotic. And Peta. Joe, you know, everybody, his whole staff always had firearms that they wore and they had people so scary. guarding the place because they, they really were threats. I mean, it mm -hmm. wasn't, it was, there was paranoia, but it was also, there was paranoia. Yeah, there's on. like the far side activists that take it in a kind of dangerous way. Yeah, I mean, I've shared my terrible PETA experience on here, haven't I? I don't remember, but that was... When they traumatized... Know, did you go first or last? Preschool time? Asher. I... No. What? Let me tell you this. Tell me this. This is do, why I got beef with PETA. When little Asher, who is, was just a little preschooler, PETA broke in to their preschool and stole their pet buddy, sugar buddy, and left an empty cage full of leaflets, of PETA leaflets. And the kids <laughs> Sorry, were so traumatized, they were sobbing. So sad. Because they love sugar bunny. Love sugar they would like bunny. take turns just like feeding sugar, sugar bunny. bunny. And sugar bunny was an older, faddish, completely domesticated rabbit. I'm sure PETA took PETA, sugar bunny, released it into the wild. Sugar bunny is probably dead within two hours. Sugar bunny? <laughs> it's just horrible. Just horrible. Oh, I, yeah. So that's why I got beef with PETA. Because that made no fucking sense. Because Sugar Bunny dead versus Sugar Bunny alive. Like, I don't know. Well, and I think, like, And traumatizing little kids. Like, come on. A domesticated, well-treated, like, it's okay to have a domesticated animal that's legal to have and take care of. We had a chinchilla. Yeah, a chinchilla in my class. And I never got to take it home. And I don't know why. But everybody else did. <laughs> there was something they knew I about just, you and your situation. It just never came up, and I thought eventually it would be my turn, and it never was my turn. Oh, that reminds yeah. me of when Asher was specially chosen in first grade to get to keep the class crawdaddy. Oh, they're the class crawdaddy. Yeah, and when it became summer, it was like a big deal that one of the students was going to be selected to take it home, and Asher got picked, and that crowd was dead. Oh. Two days later, it got it. I climbed out. It was my You're fault. You're the reason, Peter. It was my fault because I thought, I didn't realize they could climb glass. Sugar bunny is on your. So this poor crawdad in the night climbed out 
it was like up on the counter, fell <laughs> all the way to the floor, probably injured. Oh no. Crawled its poor body oh. from the kitchen into my room. Oh. And I swear something woke me in the night. It was a little scrabbling. Crawled out scrabbling. No, it came right under my pillow and died. Oh. But we didn't find it for several days later. We're looking and looking for that crawdad. Asher was so Wait, upset. Wait, you slept for days in the dead crawdad? A dead crawdad, yes. And finally, I'm like, i got to find this fucking crawdad. I'm like, it's got to be somewhere. And it poor was. Asher had to lie when everybody was asking him how the crawdad was doing. And say, oh, it's fine. Did it not? Did it? Did it not smell? Well, it would have eventually. I mean, I found it before that point, but... It's horrible. Sleeping it's affected you right above a dead crawdad. <laughs> no, I'll still leave me some lobster. I'm just going to tell you, sometimes you're talking very loudly, very closely into the mic. I know you don't have headphones on right now, but sometimes you're done. Just tell me what to do. Just, Back, forward. No, I tried to. Just give me a hand signal. I gave you a hand this, signal, and this, you did the opposite. This, this. No, I, I did this, and you what came that mean? closer. You went here, and it literally cut <laughs> the sound. I misread so your cue. <laughs> you did the opposite. I thought this meant you're too quiet. I didn't do this. No, I said, <laughs> back the F off. <laughs> Maybe you need to be more aggressive with it. Well, I was like, we're recording. I'm trying to keep it down here. <laughs> laugh level. <laughs> laugh level. Laugh level. Laugh level. Wow, get the. No, just please. You know, I just need to be told things directly. <laughs> okay, back to. Okay, but where are we texting? Parking. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm happy that I don't have to. I just get to drink wine right now. I'm so glad. I'm happy for you. Just enjoy the show. Okay, so Joe, he started really openly, graphically bashing Carol on his internet show. And it's not hard to do if you've seen her. I would probably make fun of her too, and I just, I don't like, I don't very like right. publicly, very publicly bashing yeah. him, and Carol well, started would, coming back. He would, he would make videos about her, like, being mean. No, he, yeah, I mean, he would... Threaten to kill her. <laughs> yeah, that's very publicly, mm -hmm. like on his YouTube show. Come here, Carol. He filled her mailbox with snakes. Uh, he wasn't like shy about how much he hated her, but she was also coming after him. So mm -hmm. he felt her as a threat, mm -hmm. and so that's the way he went about it. <sighs> then in the documentary, I mean, this Such documentary. Well, because there's some sad, sad, tragic things that happen to this. Yeah. I mean, there's this larger than life character, you know, Joe Exotic, that is all centered around, but there's lots of other things happening. One day, Saf got his arm torn off by a tiger. So, by the way, I think that Saf is the only sane person in this entire documentary. Yeah, like, I remember watching their part of it, and it was like, it was sad, but, like, you understood where they were coming from. Yeah. And he chose to have the arm amputated uh, rather than endure two years of constructive surgery. Which I get that. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, would it even help? If yeah. After all that? Well, he said right after he could move his fingers, like, they tested him. Yeah. But it was just so mangled. It would have... Mm -hmm. And he, he didn't want the media to win also, so it was really important to him to, like, get right back to the Tigers, mm -hmm. because Which the I media think, was, like, trying to blow it up and turn it into yeah. a thing. I could get that, too, if you're, you know, an advocate trying to protect the wildlife. I, I'm also a little curious, because it didn't go into it into the film, but if Joe did put any pressure on them or not to, like, get back to it, because he, he would be the one to be worried about, like, media coverage. I've watched a lot of interviews that Seth has done, and it seems like that was completely his decision. He was very loyal to Joe yeah. at that time, anyway, and just wanted to get back to work as soon as possible. Like, mm -hmm. that was making a statement. Yeah. Um, but it was very tragic, and what was really confusing is all of a sudden... Joe is wearing this EMT jacket. Now, he had been an EMT in the past, but I just didn't understand, so like, like at what point did you put the jacket on during this 
back in crisis. Yeah, being an EMT in the past doesn't mean you're an EMT now. <laughs> and also, like, at what opportunity during that would you choose to run and find your old EMT jacket just so you could be seen on film wearing that? Yeah. Like, yeah. I would be so, like, riveted to the moment and the situation. I, I would have be to like, say, let me. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get my jacket. Let me just say, I'm just on the humanness level here. So um, when I knew somebody who had a medical emergency in my house, I called 911, and then I looked around. Um, so medical emergency is still happening, and I'm still trying to take care of that. One of the first thoughts in my head was, oh, my goodness, the ambulance people are going to come into, like, my room and see all this stuff here, like, see, like, my bra on the floor. And, like, I started, like, kicking things, like, trying to shove it. Like, the last thing in my mind should be, oh, my goodness, what are people going to think when they come in? But it did. In that no, I always think that. Of, like, people viewing. Oh, we've talked about this. Yeah. When I'm, on, when yeah. I'm super sick, yeah, I yeah. make sure that I take a shower. I, I put, put on of, a like, cute, like, PJ outfit. Sometimes I think, like, I want to shave my legs today. Like, what if I get in a car accident and I die? And then, like, they're like, she has hairy legs. Sometimes that comes up. No, I have to die with lipstick on. I have to. I told you I will put it on you. If that <laughs> I'll shave happens. your legs I and may, you take care of the lipstick. I may eat you later if we're stranded, but I'll, you'll have lipstick on. I swear, I will not eat those lips. I forgot we were doing this today. I have no makeup on, so I just oh, put on some lipstick. I don't, I, don't, I don't usually wear lipstick. I don't know. It just seems like a waste. Whoa. That's like, like my order of makeup, you know. Will be like lipstick. I've been doing then that. Then mascara. Skincare lately. Let me stop there. Three days. I'm gonna have sunscreen on because that, yeah. like, that's all I really have. I did like a serum and a moisturizer for the last three days and I've enjoyed it actually. It's, it's very dry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Skin <laughs> is basically <laughs> the Sahara Desert. I've been doing the water challenge and I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't drink water. Oh, and I hate drinking water. Yeah, I just don't. Do it unless it's right in front of me. I drink a glass of water in the morning when I wake up because I'm thirsty. You know? oh, I don't usually do that. Unless and then I'm thirsty, I, I, I mean, I have like two cups of tea, which is water. I do drink, okay, yes, me too. I have kombucha, but which they is say water. That if it has caffeine in it, like you get to half this. Well, I don't think tea is a diuretic like coffee. Yeah. I refuse to believe it. All right, I don't Prove know. it. I want to see the graphs. I want to see the stats. I look up to you, so I'm going to ignore everything I've done. Ignore it. Tea is water. That's what I think. Great. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry. Where am I? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. okay. okay. Saf, Saf lost his arm. Yes. Got a bit right off. Okay. Joe Exotic bred more tigers than anyone and sold them all around the country. The Endangered Species Act doesn't allow the breeding and selling of tigers. So this is a legal activity. Hmm. Carol Baskin, of course, pointed this out, and actually she created a whole thing that she posted online that told all the names of the people in her bad guy network. Hmm. She had a lot of followers, a lot of fans. That's because she sold herself as being... The one on the like good a, side of this. Like a, uh, what's it called? Like a conservationist. Yes. Mm -hmm. That she's trying to help the problem that these guys are creating. Um, Doc's girlfriends, they each had enormous houses oh, on the property. Convenient. Oh, yeah. Like separate. Separate. Like, yeah. But they're like big. Like I was. A, this so is why, like, it was a so, big contrast from how they're living on Joe's property, how his yeah, staff are living compared to that. That's what makes me think, like, more cultish. Like, I'm going to lure you in with things that you absolutely. want. Absolutely. Um, and that way I can get the sex, the fame, the, like, oh, I get to sleep with these young women. And you get to play with freaking exotic animals all day. Like, that's cool. Yeah. I'm I've sure. never touched a tiger. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do that without... You know, entrapping women into sexual maybe not situations, but I mean that's maybe a, not as a living. Perhaps. So for all these people, it seems like it's a, it's a lure. Yeah, they needed that sex. Like it's a way to them. bring people in. Yeah, they need money. Yeah, it's a draw. Um. Okay. So Joe had two husbands in the beginning of the docu series. He had his husband John Finley. 
but then he brought in 19 year old Travis Maldonado. This and, part. And they all three got it. married in this ceremony during the documentary. So there's a picture of Travis on the left and a picture of the marriage ceremony where they all three are wearing those bright pink shirts. And this is, a, this is a lot for Oklahoma, I think. Oh, it's a lot. I mean, I haven't been there, but I'm just imagining that I've it's been probably there. out of the norm. Mm hmm Yep. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> so, these tiger guys, like I said, like, they have this allure about them, but it's really hard work. Like, you don't get days off. Yeah, I mean, the animals have to eat and live. live. Yeah, if they're taken care of. So, up till now in the docuseries, it's all about, like, these people, these characters, these how they keep big cats. And then things take a turn. Like, all of a sudden, somebody's being interviewed about Carol Baskin. Carol fucking Baskin. Um, I think this is the point where I got hooked on the series and I finished. No, you're like, all what? I'm like, yeah, please, you're like, huh? Give what? Me more, please. <laughs> so all of a sudden, it's revealed by someone being interviewed that Carol Batson was a millionaire, mm. and that she inherited her inherited her husband's millions after he vanished. And so the interviewer was like, "What? Her husband disappeared, vanished?" And it was like, "What is going on?" So everyone in the film that was interviewed, other than Carol Baskin and her new husband, Howie, who believes that Carol Baskin killed her husband yes, and um, hid her body on her property. She obviously did, though. Possibly feeding him to the tigers. I mean, she obviously did, though. <laughs> so we don't have to say possibly. Like, that's <laughs> really the only logical explanation. Well, where is he? She fed him to the tigers. I mean, that's such an easy, convenient way to get rid of a body. Exactly. And, I mean, the whole, like, her whole explanation... No body, no crime. ...doesn't make sense. Her explanation, like, he flew off in the plane. However, it's, like, there. Like, his truck is there. Like, no, I he didn't fly anymore. He didn't go anywhere. Well, but that's what she said, was that he... That he was, he was going to go to Costa Rica. Yeah, yes. But, but his truck was still there. Like, everything... Everything was there. Yeah, because... She killed him and then fed him to the tigers. And she tried to set up something. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll she get into that obviously that had issues. And other people reported that, like, he was fine. Like, she tried to say that he was, like, logically, like, he was, like, like he dementia. Like, he wandered off his confused. Yeah, like, he was confused. He got dementia. But nobody else reported that there was any, anything right. like that. And that he had, I don't know. It just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Like, his closest family members would know that, especially with dementia. Like, family gets concerned because of the paranoia and the memory loss. Like, it's pretty apparent. Do you remember that awkward part in the show where Carol Baskin and her husband made the filmers watch that terrible, terrible song video thing? And it just went on and on. It was just so oh, bad. Oh, yeah. On, like, it was like a video on your, about... On your computer that yeah. probably had dial-up. No, it was so bad. <laughs> okay. Her so, husband was... Her, like, new husband was really odd. Yeah. Like, he seems, like, just really quiet and timid. And then, like and then she has, like, pictures of him and her. And he's, like, in, like, bondage? <laughs> Not bondage. <laughs> I don't know. What's it... What's it called when, um, you, when you look like you're wearing horse attire? No, he was <laughs> wearing a collar and a leash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Held by Carol. I think it's that like was their like wedding horse. photos or something. Yeah, it was like I a mean, touch it, beyond. Well, like it definitely think. tells that's the relationship. Yeah. Yeah, because they. She but, holds the leash. But when they talk, like they try to come off like they're just like very typical people. Very They're nobody like I know. Centered and balanced, and, and then, but like when you're like, well, but you really? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. everybody has their thing, but not everybody posts photos of it. Just. <laughs> not everybody has it as their Facebook cover photo. Yeah, I mean, not shaming, but you can't claim both. Let's talk about Don Lewis. Okay. This was Carol Baskin's first husband. Okay. He spoke to his ex-wife 
and told her he was planning to divorce Carol Baskin and that Carol was dangerous and that he was a friend of her. Mm -hmm. The next day, he was gone. So that was 1997. Carol and Don lived in Tampa, Florida at the time of his disappearance. And police investigated this. They looked into foul play. Um, they didn't find anything. Don Lewis was married and he had children when he met Carol. Carol was 20 years younger than him. And he abandoned his family for this new younger blonde, you know, the newer model. And Don called Carol an angel. And his ex wife told him, She's an angel sent from hell, and one day you'll find out. So maybe he did. Pretty strong words. So Don Lewis was a ladies' man. Mm -hmm. And if he would have divorced Carol, she would have been left with nothing. So Don gave his assistant a letter that had a copy of the request that he had made for a restraining order against Carol. And he told his assistant that if anything ever happened to him, she was to turn it over to the police. So it stated that Carol had threatened to kill him. She had a 45 revolver and she had hid his 357. That protection order was denied. That happened in June and he disappeared in August. Suspicious? I say so. Yeah, but pretty much, you know, if I write a letter saying you did it, and then I die. You did it. So, Carol, I noticed watching this, she has a really interesting tell. So every time she's saying something that I think is probably a lie, she looks up like this while she's saying it. I noticed that too, actually. I remember thinking specifically, like, you just look like you're lying. Like, yeah, oh. like she would just completely look up and be like, I never saw him again. <laughs> you know? I can't make eye contact with you right now. We feel unwell where you went. Yeah. So, and I actually saw an internet article that said a body language expert said she was lying. Um, Have they done like a um, poly polygraph? I don't know. I didn't learn that they did. So, Carol, as you said, said that. One explanation was that he developed dementia and he just wandered off and got lost. Maybe he fell in the swamp or something. Again, I think you would have found a body, bone, something. <laughs> there are tigers in a swamp. <laughs> there are gators. There are gators. Oh, gosh. It's a um, <laughs> Joe Exotic made a video called Here Kitty Kitty. That's on YouTube. And it fe features a Carol Baskin lookalike. And she oh, looks a lot like Carol Baskin. Really, yeah, yeah. Like, you have to look at it twice, like, is that Carol fucking Baskin? No, yeah. it's a lookalike. And it shows a Carol Baskin um, feeding murdered husband meat to tigers. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. I remember that that was I mean, it's kind of funny. Like, yeah. I mean, if it was I mean, meat, I wouldn't think it was funny. I get that, like, it's in bad taste. For the person who's like husband has disappeared. I get that. However, if she murdered him, it's funny. It would be different if he didn't write a letter right before he died that said she did it. Yeah. I mean, exactly. if that wasn't there, then it'd be like, well, I mean, can we rule out other things or not? I mean, he was terrified of her. Like, that's a fact. Well, and all of his family members like were like, yeah, no, she did this. Yeah. <laughs> Which means there's like a Ruth. Ruth Roof? Sorry, this is the wine happening. It's not ruthlessness. Is it ruthlessness? Ruthlessness. Why does Ruth have such a bad take? I don't know. Poor Ruth. Ruth. Anyways, people saw that she had a dark side. So, did Carol put her husband in the meat grinder and feed the tigers? That's one theory. Actually, I heard that's much harder to do than it sounds. Um, from past, I don't know which things I've seen, but like like, the bones and stuff aren't actually meant to go through a meat grinder. Um, so, like, putting a whole body in would actually be much harder than it sounds. But I think tigers, I mean, if you just threw a whole body in there, there might not be much left. No, especially over time. Um, one thing I did read, though, is that, like, burning bodies, this is just, like, a, you know, in our over a year of doing this, I've learned. The things we've learned. I've learned <laughs> that burning a body, though, um, can 
it can get rid of a lot, but there'd still be some. Oh yeah, that was in my spontaneous human yeah. combustion. Exactly. Like, like it has to be at such a high heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which to probably could things. get just burning it. So it would make sense that like something maybe chewed it, digested it, and like completely dissolved it. Yep. Which so pigs do that. Oh, I've heard that pigs are another yeah. way that hide a body. Yeah. Carol had given herself Dawn's power of attorney with specific wording that said, This durable family power of attorney shall not be affected by my disability or disappearance. So that wording, having disappearance in there, is pretty rare verbiage. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I were making something for myself, I definitely wouldn't be like, if I disappear... I'd be like, no, if I die, we're in an accident. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, Carol's sense. never charged with anything. There was no body, no physical evidence. So, Joe is really stepping things up. He really enjoyed fucking with Carol. Like, he got pleasure and he was out of like it. The... Yeah, and he has, you know, his YouTube TV channel. He's got people filming him all the time. Um... So, he's doing all kinds of things. He's very outspoken about how he hates Carol. And then meanwhile, this Rick Kirkham guy is filming everything because he wants to make a reality show. So he's there helping Joe produce his Joe Exotic TV YouTube show. But he, but behind that, he's filming everything because he wants to do this reality show. He sees there's that poten- that point, yeah. potential there. I mean, this is, you know, gold here. Cool. This character. Yeah. And Joe was fine with having everything filmed because he loved attention, he sought fame, he had this massive ego. So everything was filmed, everything he says. Um, I mean, he's doing vulgar threats to Carol, vulgar things. At one point, he takes a photo of a recently severed horse penis, said it's for Carol's husband, Howard. Um, Rude. Just all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah I do want to be endless clear, and endless. Like, I am particularly against both of them, <laughs> in all honesty, in different ways. Yeah. Um, I think Carol Baskin is a murderer. He makes her place look better than it is. And I think he is an illegal animal breeder that mistreats his yeah, wildlife. Well, if she didn't have her ex-husband's millions, I mean, that's what she's living on. It's his money. Well, I guess that's why you marry a millionaire. And then murder them. Don't do that. So Joe decides to change his business logo to look exactly like hers. <laughs> yeah. Like exactly. Like. Well, didn't he change something like the website too? So people were getting confused and were like, yeah, the traffic yeah. was flowing to him. He changed the business yeah. name and the logo so it looked exactly. He didn't change the address of his so it would be from Florida like hers. Um. So he ends up getting sued for copyright infringement, and they win it, and he's ordered to pay $1 million, which he couldn't afford. Yeah. So this is kind of where things take a dark turn for Joe. He couldn't... Yeah, he's stepping in deep water. He hated her, but he still couldn't give up antagonizing her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Rick's ready to, like, launch his reality show as enough footage... And if that show would have got picked up, that would have helped Joe's financial situation. But then what happens? The studio burns down. All the footage is lost. And it, the police said it was arson. Totally on purpose. But nobody could ever figure out who did it. Well, he did it. So Joe's now desperate for money. He owes Carol fucking Baskin a million dollars. So he starts breeding tiger cubs to sell because that's a money maker. He's on the verge of losing a zoo. Um, Carol had spent over $1 million in legal fees fighting Joe, but she could afford it. Like, she had more money that she could spend with this. It was costing sixty to $70,000 a month to feed Joe's animals. Yikes. A month. Yikes. And the conditions at the zoo were starting to deteriorate. So Joe decided to try to settle with Carol and Howard because there was just, like, no way. Then comes in another character, Jeff Lowe. 
I did not like Jeff Lowe at all. Just, Nobody I, likes Jeff Lowe. I just want to say, like, I hate his face. I don't like his personality. I don't like his style. He reminds me of, like, a lot of these, like, guys that come in and then end up effing you over at some point. Like, they're they the kind of guys like they're on that their wear their glasses backwards on their hat, oh which I've never understood. Oh my goodness. There's somebody that keeps dropping off, I think, cards that they steal for joy rides, like right by my house. And I actually saw the guy today and totally had a hat with his sunglasses yeah, on the other way. And he just like, that's walked a off with some of like, people. You stole that car and then left it here. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> Right. Your neighborhood would be good for this. Kind of right. off the beaten right. path. Yeah. It's it, well between two long fences too, so they yeah. it's like once a month there's like two or three cars that are left there. And then they get oh. taken off. But it's weird. Who does that? Like why would you tell me? Cars are intact. Why would you do that? Why would you drop it off? Yeah. So you're done. Is it like you probably used it for a crime? Oh, that makes sense. Okay, because like it, today it was a pickup truck that got left there, and the guy like got out, parked it, and then walked around the, the block. Yeah, and probably get picked up by somebody. Yeah, or it could be just a drop off. You know how like you want to switch drivers. Mm, the car stays there for like like today the car stayed there for like six hours, and then it got um it got picked up by the. The house next to it, I think, called it and it got picked up by a tow truck. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they just like drop it. It's weird. Weird. Paper topic. I don't, I don't know. Car car. I'm gonna run after them. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop it. Can I interview? Do you want to be on our podcast? <laughs> hey, hat glasses guy. <laughs> Tell us what the purpose of your glasses are backwards on your head. Why do you leave these cars? Where are they attacked? Do you still have radios? Like, what's happening? Do people buy radios anywhere? Okay, Jeff Lowe. Yeah, that guy. Sleazy, yeah. slimy. <laughs> there we go. He comes in there, you know, he's got a lot of swagger, like, I'm, I've got money, I'm going to save your zoo with my money. Mm-hmm. He's also into big cats, so he needed somewhere to house his cats. He drove a Ferrari, he lived in a mansion, he was a swinger. Wait, uh, like, like... Sexually swinging? Sexually swinging. Okay, I just yes. want to make sure there wasn't another name. He and his wife would take tiger cubs out to Vegas and use them as bait to get girls. So his motto was, a little pussy gets you a lot of pussy. Ew, gross. So totally Joe, totally back. enamored with this guy, right? Ew. You know, he's got this lifestyle, he looks like this guy's all going on. He kind of is what Joe wants to be. So he told Joe not to settle with Carol, and Jeff paid some of Joe's debt to Carol Baskin, and the GW Zoo was put in Jeff Lowe's name. Um, so Jeff Lowe basically stole the zoo. Yeah, exactly. So he was given these keys to the kingdom, and this was to help Joe circumvent Carol Baskin. And Joe at first really trusted Jeff, Mm-hmm. Um, but things at the park really changed. Jeff brought in his old pe- old people, everybody's a felon. And that's when they opened the pizza place and sold pizza with yeah, the Walmart meat. Me. <laughs> I remember they were like, I ate pizza from there. And everyone's like, this is delicious. Mm. Oh, probably is. is. <laughs> Food poisoning, what's it going to kill your gut? In 2015, Joe Exotic ran for president. I remember that. He I mean, had, like, was in a parade. There's so much going on in this docuseries. I mean, it would have been a really good reality show. Really. It, it was, like, too big for real life, even. And that's why what happened too happened. Too big for real life. Did you see? Oh, All right. I thought like, there was something waiting it down, but it's Neither of us has empty. Waiting, it's okay, let's top off our paper cups. Thanks. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Look, I, I'm. Do you have this this purple line of my? Not as much as yours. <laughs> oh my goodness, you don't. You're a little sloppy. I like to let my wine dribble sit, down the cup just, a little bit. You know, like sit a minute on the edge of my paper cup before <laughs> it goes into my mouth. <laughs> You're like half drinking, half dribbling. I'm like I have to go into a deep thought mid drink. Okay, 
So, what else was going on in this period? Oh, this is when Joe got dragged around by right. one of his own teachers. I think you're a dribbler. What, what about my mouth facing See, I don't do that because I don't like to waste wine. Well, they're like, what, am, like, I, what am I doing wrong? You're not sucking wine. Do I <laughs> Maybe you need a straw. Sippy cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that went up my nose. <laughs> do you remember <laughs> what are you doing? Snorting wine over there? These are the moments that people used to miss before before we started videoing. And now it's cover cover. I didn't know that sipping it would like make all the alcohol air go up my nose, but alcohol. it did. Yeah. Try sipping it. You no, know, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want wine up my nose like you yeah. just, It's like huffing alcohol. Look how neat my drink is. It's so neat. I don't have a sloppy mouth like you. <laughs> Such a sloppy <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I don't even have lipstick on. <laughs> I, I like wine lipstick. It's all about not wasting for me. This is the whole thing. Yeah. So, so do you remember drugs. when Joe got drunk around by one of his likers oh. and nobody helped him? Yeah, I remember that. He's like shooting like, his gun off, trying to scare it away. I remember being like, like dude, nobody guy, helped him. The dude's still filming it. Yeah. Like, he's gonna die. They're filming that for one of his campaign videos. Mm. So Joe's getting increasingly moody. All this stuff's getting to him. Um, so he lured in and controlled his husbands through exotic animals, gifts, like you'd get them guns, you'd get them four wheelers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. drugs. drugs. So there was a lot of meth use, a lot of weed. Do you think that had to do a bit with like his like overzealousness, like filming and videotaping? Like whenever he did it, he always seemed like super... I don't energetic. know if he was currently using during that, but mm -hmm. I know that husbands... There, well, what? John Finley himself said that yeah. he did use meth, and then other people said that um, Travis did use meth I just as find well. It, I find it hard that like if they're using meth, then he's just not... But it was on hand everywhere. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. His, I mean, his he behavior did. was really erratic. He was erratic. And impulsive. But I don't know if I saw that level of deterioration that I saw the others. I don't know. But, like, I think they all filmed well. Like, Travis went downhill, like, real fast. The four years that he was with Joe, like, he started out in this, like, mm -hmm. yeah. adorable young thing. And, like, four years in, he looked completely. Completely different. I mean, but like, how much lower can you go as a tiger king? <laughs> like, that sounds <laughs> bad. I don't know. I it's don't hard know. for me to imagine now. less than that um, for him specifically. I mean, he seems like he was functioning pretty well, I guess is what I'll say. Like, he was doing a lot. Yeah. Was that meth filled? <laughs> but sometimes it was kind of almost like a, like a like manic mething. energy of like too much of him like running around filming. Like, to have the energy to do that all the time is a lot. Like, sometimes I wake up yeah, and Yeah, maybe it's like low-level meth use. Enough yeah. to get the energy, but not enough to destroy your life. Yeah, I mean, his life teeth. feels pretty destroyed to me, but... Well, it starts to go. Yeah. And apparently neither of his husbands, John Finley or Travis Maldonado, were gay. They were both straight guys. So, one day... John Finley left Joe for a woman who got pregnant. This is very distressing to Joe. Yeah, I bet. Um, but he still had Travis. Travis, however, wasn't doing that great. He complained Joe wouldn't let him leave the park or get a job. And he played with guns constantly. He would jokingly point them at people all the time and mm -hmm. say they weren't loaded. And this is the real sad part of the yeah. thing. One day... He tried to prove his Ruger wouldn't shoot without a clip, so he pointed it at his own head and pulled the trigger. Unfortunately, it shot, and um, he shot himself in the head and, and died instantly. I was actually really surprised that they included that in the Netflix series, because like, they show the webcam footage, not of the actual... Not of him, yes. Of of, the reaction from the other person. Yes, because everything was being filmed all the time, so it showed the reaction of Josh Dial, who mm -hmm. was Joe's campaign manager at the time, and, and it showed his whole reaction. And that, to me, felt like too much. 
It really did. Like, I hope he gave his permission for that. I'm, and I'm sure he did. Um, I, but it just felt like, I don't know, like, it was your too reaction close. to someone's suicide. Something. Like, even, so when I did the podcast episode. Well, about, I wouldn't have called it a suicide. Or no, it wasn't. It was accidental. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Um, but, like, so the Oki, Okigahara force, mm-hmm. the suicide force, um, like, it was seen as so not okay to even, even, like, filming it was taboo because it was seen as disrespectful. So, like, yeah. filming someone's reaction to an accidental shooting seems inappropriate almost. I mean, I, I think it'd be inappropriate. If it was my family member, like, it would have been fine that they could just talk about it. They don't need to show footage. Yeah, it was just, again, too, it was like the kitten video. The, like, it goes a step too far. Yeah, like, you don't need to yeah, show him. They show it every minute. Pack. Like, he's like this. And wait, what, yeah. And then he like slowly. You're gets literally up and starts watching out. someone get traumatized. Like yeah. I don't see and why. And he said he had PTSD after. I, yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. someone shoot himself in the head right in front of you. I mean, no matter anything. I mean. I'm not meaning to. I mean. Oh, it's, it's so tragic. It so really tragic. Yeah. Because absolutely. he, I mean, just because someone's struggling doesn't mean that their life doesn't have value. Like he had value as a yeah, person. He was so young. And, yeah, it was sad. Yeah, it was really, and I didn't expect that. Like, it, it was like it took a turn like, for sure. It was something that like I was like, who's this odd guy with tigers? And then I got like pulled in, and then it was like, whoa! I remember actually having to stop it because um, you and I specifically, if in the field of being a little close to that, and like I had to stop and like not watch it for a little bit because it triggered me. Like, no, it was a lot. Like, I didn't see it coming. There was no warning. Like, no, no warning. And I think that's what Netflix kind of got out of that was it was like the shock value, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but people didn't really focus on this as this part of it. Like they, most they of the focus is on it. you know Joe and his personality and his big hair, Carol. Carol Smollett, yeah, and Carol Baskin. Mm-hmm. But like, like this part didn't really get touched on, and I thought you know that was a really really tragic part of the story. Absolutely. I think that's probably the biggest part of this story, honestly. Like, um, well, it's the only person that died in the whole thing. Only person who died and unexpectedly, not for any Tragically. good reason. Like, yeah, and it's just sad. But it totally represents so that, like, um, if they had better park rules, if they had, like, well, everybody's firearms. Like, with guns all the time. And they showed video clips of that, like, of him doing that on a regular basis. So you could kind of see, like, yeah, he totally would pull it out and be like, look. And And if if he's using drugs, he's maybe not being as careful, you know. Yeah. Thought it wouldn't fire, but it did. I mean, you don't play with guns. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's sad. It's really sad. sad. Um, And then the mom in there being in Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And I know that, like, it impacted, it absolutely impacted, um, the Tiger King. What's his name? What's his actual name? The Tiger King. Is his the name. Tiger King. Okay. Yes. After Travis died, yeah. who... Huge impact. Spirals, like, he was already not doing well, a lot of stressors, yeah. and, like, that, um, really caused him to take a dive, but not for long, because then he moved there. Married Dylan Passage. Yeah, I remember. Who like, actually he, was gay. And it wasn't that long after. Four months. Yeah, I was about to say for someone like. And Dylan is a stable, attractive, young, actually gay guy. Gay man. Look how good, good looking he is. Yeah, cute. Um, actually loved Joe. Like, mm-hmm. it was the real deal there. Mm-hmm. He was 22 when he met. So Joe was older guy. Like fifties mm-hmm. during this, yeah, and so he kind of has this pattern of young ensnaring men. these like straight guys, luring them in. But this one, which kind of makes sense for Oklahoma, because you know, I mean, also in that vein, I was kind of thinking, well, in Oklahoma, it's not very socially okay to be gay in a, in a lot of areas, at least. So. Um, you know, there could have been, I don't know, it'd be really hard to be in a, oh, like, a relationship with someone and have not, have no feelings at all. Well, they're also on drugs a lot. Yeah. 
I still I'm think not allowed to leave. <laughs> I just think there might be a piece of like culturally but not being socially acceptable. So maybe being kept kind of like afterwards being like, oh yeah, definitely not, definitely not gay. Yeah, I mean they were both pretty outspoken with they weren't gay and they were all you know had women on the side. But Dylan, yeah. very they were stable, educated. Possibly. Yeah, well, not by the report at least. But they were married to a man and sleeping with a man as well. Yes, but apparently not super into it. <laughs> I'm just yeah. I'm I just going off their report. I agree with you. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I yeah. So, this, though, they got married, um, oh, it's only two months after Travis died. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, like, shocking. Yes. Two months is shocking. That's not okay. So, Dylan's 22, but really supportive of Joe, like, it seemed like a very le- legit, legitimate relationship. Okay. Um, Joe's now running for governor. And the zoo is falling apart, and then he becomes under federal investigation. So this is really like the demise of everything. Joe had been misappropriating zoo funds for his campaign, and this is Jeff Lowe's money. Mm-hmm. He had spent sixty thousand dollars on things like condoms with his face on it. Yeah. It's like campaign swag. It's like hand them out to the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jeff Lowe's pissed. He kicks Sorry, Joe out of the park. The tax person. <laughs> um, so, you know, Joe's getting ready to leave. And a couple days before he leaves, he burns things, sells things. And then he goes into hiding with Dylan. Then there's the whole murder for hire plot. Joe talked about killing Carol Baskin on a daily basis, very publicly. It's on YouTube. And... He started reaching out to individuals to see if they would actually kill her. So then, someone who know, knew Joe for 20 years, this guy named James Garrison, he signs up to be a snitch to the FBI and record everything between him and Joe and Jeff, all the conversations. Snitches get... Stitches or ditches. Snitches get stitches. Or ditches. Well, I think ditches is like the severe end. Yes. Well, this guy didn't get anything too bad. Snitches get but... a lesser sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so the FBI just wanted to know everything that, you know, Joe's up to and Jeff was up to. And then Carol and her husbands were informed that that was a credible threat against Carol's life. And then one of Jeff's staff, do you remember the scary guy with the tear tattoo? Who was scary, yeah. Alan Glover. Mm-hmm. So he's a scary mofo. He's got, a, you know, a felony history. And he had the plan to... You're going to have to keep talking while I go. Hide, hunt, hunt find this woman. Oh, you're leaving me. I have to go to the bathroom. Keep talking. Okay. Why are you so panicked? I'm just <laughs> no, Go ahead. It's fine. I'll be fine. Can you not say it like that? Keep going. You just how are you gonna get out? I'm gonna stand up and walk out of the room. Okay. I'll okay? just start talking. I'll just talk with you. I so one of the older, plans, but I am on her way couch. No, go go ahead. I'm gonna be comfortable. Thanks. Um, so Alan Glover, Scary Mofo, one of Jeff Lowe's dudes that he brought to work at the zoo. Um have this plan to get Carol. One of the plans was to drug Carol with ketamine, which is a sedative, throw her in the back of a van, drive her to a swamp, and cut her body into pieces and throw it in, I assume, to be eaten by alligators. But then nothing really happened. So to get a murder for hire case prosecuted, there has to be evidence, such as money changing hands, This was dragged out for months. Nothing happened. Everybody's waiting for some action. The FBI are waiting. Everybody's waiting, and nothing happens. So then this Jeff Lowe guy gets into it. Mr. Sunglasses on the back of his head gets involved, and he really is motivated to get Joe in trouble. So he starts talking to Alan Glover, 
about this and also talking to the FBI. And so Jeff Lowe finds out that Alan Glover was paid $3,000 as a down payment for killing that Carol Baskin. And Alan Glover just took this money and just ran. I mean, why not? I would probably do that too. The FBI finally caught Joe and arrested him. Oh, welcome back. Thanks. I missed you. I had the best of times. I'm glad it wasn't the worst of times. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Okay. It's a lot of pressure having us being filmed down there, but it's like so much happening at once. I feel like we've done okay. I feel like we did better than the last time, as far as like comfort. The well, last time I was like this the entire time. My microphone was basically a proboscis. What's a proboscis? It's like a nose. A hanging off attachment <laughs> yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah. I was basically an elephant seal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Is. So Joe got arrested. Your soap smells amazing, by the way. It's lavender. Everything's organic here. <laughs> Only the best at the wellness center. <laughs> um, he was 55 at the time. The feds then searched the zoo. They found evidence that five tigers had been killed. Not okay. They found the skulls buried on the zoo property. Not okay. Joe Exotic was charged with 19 wildlife charges. It was really crucial to the FBI to bring the murder for hire charges and the wildlife charges together because it really made Joe out to be more of a bad guy because people do not like animal abuse. Yeah, it could it also get some like motive behind it. A they give more weight yeah. to the murder for hire charges, which were kind of on the weak side. So because freedom of speech on the internet, like you can post whatever, but there was only the couple videos where he's beginning. He right, and the exchange whatever. of money that's just word of mouth. Like there was no video proof. There was yeah. No and then going happening. back and forth at each other, you could almost just be like, okay, well, stop it. Okay. Yeah, stop it. Joe was sentenced to 22 years in prison. Is he still in prison? Yes. Yeah. He decided to get revenge, and so he ratted out everybody he knew he needed to pee that. So suddenly he's peed his friend. <laughs> So, like, Doc and all these other people, yeah, like, all everybody around. got dragged into this. Uh -huh. Saf, who was the only reasonable person in this whole documentary, said it right. He was just talking about how in this story there's really no winners, um, mm -hmm. not even the animals. And unfortunately, like, that's really sad because these people all said like they were here for the animals. Well, and if you, I mean, the animals aren't going to, I think that's the sad part too, is like even if they get con confiscated, like they're going to go to another down. related place if, you know, and who knows about the quality there. They just haven't been investigated. Yeah. Carol Pask. <clears throat> so the reason the tigers were killed, I mean, it's up to debate. So some people say that they were killed, they were perfectly health, healthy tigers that were killed just because they weren't spaced. Joe says they were aging and he was just, you know, killing them to put them out of their misery. Instead basically. of having like a vet come out and put them down and have documentation, yeah. which he probably should have. And Doc Antle um, was accused of euthanizing tigers and cremating them. I remember reading something about that one. Yeah. So, I mean, if your money makers are the cubs, and the cubs grow into these tigers that cost ten thousand a month like to feed and like take up all the space. A lot, and you keep buying kittens, and they keep growing old, and then you put them outside, and then there's just a bunch of those cubs outside, and they're just eating food somehow. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I have a straight cat problem at the moment. I'll not my doing. Don't feed them. <sighs> but I'm not going to not feed them because, okay, so I officially have a cat that's outside that's not mine. I've named her Chance. 
and I think she's pregnant. So she's pregnant, and that, like she comes up to my door, and she literally sits on my porch and looks. She wants you to make a place for her watches, to have her baby. She watches me through my window on the front door every day. This like, happens to me. And she just stares at me when I open the door. She goes, ah, and it's like the saddest, most desperate sound. And I give her food. Okay. Step two of this is like that happened for a little while. She now like the front porch is like her place. All of a sudden, they all I pulled up to the house like two days ago, and there's like this giant cat I've never seen before laying on my no, porch. I'm like, so where are, did you come from? They have first a cat of all. network, and they totally. spread the word that there's free food there down in Macy's house. Five frequent cats. Three of them are black. I think they're all related yeah. to her. She's a black cat. Um, and so I think they're all like siblings that live nearby, but this other cat, like none of the, the black kitties wanted anything to do with it. And we're like hissing at it on the porch. And like, I came home and I'm like, I'm not feeding you. And it was like, Aah. and then it ran away and I didn't feed it. It's not a good idea. But I, now I'm like trying to feed Chance the back door, but a boo bear barks at her and like, but I can tell like she, I can, she wants to find somewhere safe to have her babies. So I have like this little house thing, That's small, what to me, exactly. and I put it, I put it outside to like, okay, like here's a little warm place on these wind storms that we have. I don't know, like how do I not feed her? So I try to like be quiet, because when she meows, it like calls everybody else. Have you seen the white cat that lives there? Oh, snake. Oh, I have. Yeah, outside. Yeah, obviously. Well, yeah, no, she's in her effort. Okay, but yes, I have. She was rescued by me from a tree across the street. I thought she was a kitten, an innocent kitten. I made her one of those outdoor houses for yeah. a few days just to make her comfortable. Mm -hmm. Ended up bringing her in eventually when she had the trust. She was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Had all her babies, was welcoming with her, kept two of the kittens. Then as soon as she was done with those kittens, as soon as they were weaned, she left me oh. for my ex-husband. That's why she lives here. <gasps> so I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that because... I mean, she told me. One day she just left my house, walked over here, and she's lived here ever since. Hmm. There's a cat that Rude. looks just like her, and I call her Second Chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's I'm so rude. my stray problem, but I do. <laughs> like, I like, still like hear my like me open the door to feed her, and they come running to the point of like jumping in front of cars. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Stop. No, it's a slippery slope that what you're doing. Well, Gosh, it was the neighbor's way. cats that have now populated over. But, like, I, I can't. Hope our watchers aren't counting how many times. I don't know. Plus. I don't know. It's almost two hours. I'm almost done. No, we started late. We started late. We did start. Okay, we did start like 20 minutes late. Yes. Okay. And to be fair, this topic was like over many Netflix series. So there's yes, a lot. Yes, I've here. condensed. I'm glad my topic was shorter today to give you more time. I feel fine about it. Okay, where am I? I don't know. I've already bounced about to All right. No, no I'm in the follow up now. Long. I'm in the where are they now? Where are they now? Tell me. So Joe was already in prison before the show dropped on Netflix and like blew up. Um, he's still in prison, serving mm -hmm. 22 years. I remember like Trump being like called to like release him back when Trump was. Yes, Joe was really hoping for a pardon from Trump yeah. before he left office, and that didn't happen. So that was disappointing, I'm sure. I mean, but, like, why would he be though? I mean, well, he pardoned, uh, what's that, Lil, Lil Mass or Mass X? Or yeah, but, like, people who's... Somebody been... did the Satan Nikes. Oh, that guy? Yeah, he got pardoned. I mean, I don't know. It, yeah, sometimes maybe. the pardons seem like they're just randomly tossed about. Well, I mean, and Trump actually talked about it, which made me, I'm like, oh, are you? Gonna and need he seems it? like, you know, but however, in political realm. And yeah, but this is a gay man from Oklahoma. Like, you know, I think there's political things that Trump probably kept in oh, mind. Oh, is that the gay thing? Rude. I mean, okay, I'm not Trump, but it's not out of. You know, I thought he might. But he I didn't. didn't think he would. Joe got COVID <clears throat> in prison early on. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, mean, I hate to laugh, but it's kind of like. Um, did Weinstein get that too at some point? Somebody did. I don't, really, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> or, as somebody mentioned, Carol Baskin went on Dancing with the Stars. Yes, uh, I saw she went. I don't watch that show. And they said that she wasn't even a good dancer. Well, I 
Could that. imagine. Yeah. Um, Did she wear the cat shirts? I'm sure know. she wore cat shirts. I don't, watch, I don't watch the show, but I'm just that? imagining where lots of billowy cat things. And maybe the the length is also my fault because I'm going on a lot of the tangents on your topic, but it feels relevant. So I'm likely to take some. I, I have to say, I will. I'll take. Um, uh, so I have a new appreciation for influencers recently than I've mm. ever had in the past because I, I don't know if you've heard of Brad Mondo. No. So he's a hairstylist and, um, he's uh, like very fun and energetic and he talks and like reviews these like home hairstyle videos and, um, and they're very entertaining to watch. And I've watched them and I literally have seen myself like I ordered a product that he recommended. Ooh. And like and I was like, oh my gosh, he is an influencer. Totally. And so the skincare thing was another guy that I found from him that like I like I was like, oh, I should try that. I mean it's totally sucked me into that world and it is addictive. Yeah. I always am like is this expensive thing better than something else that could be out there super cheap at like what I like about like Walgreens? Well like Brad Mondo and this other guy, like they they do reviews like very honestly, like this one is cheap and it works, so don't you don't need to change it and they'll like critique people who like don't need to spend hundred and eighteen dollars on a moisturizer. Which the same I thing. wouldn't say this, anyway. Yeah, right. So anyways, I I've kind of appreciated it as not a makeup person, not a hair person at all. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I can listen to someone who does know what they're talking about. Yeah, you're putting their trust in that person. Yeah, total influencer. Is influencer. Tiger King an influencer? I don't know. For no. some, he was. Not anymore. Bit. He did. He's in prison. He did for a while. I mean, he still could be. He probably still has followers. I think he's but like, the thing is, if you're in prison for 22 years, yeah. like, a lot of people are going to drift away. Yeah. Oh, you did say we started late, but this is actually a timer, so it's an hour and 56 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I only have a couple more things to say. Go for it. John Stanley got new teeth. He's married to a woman. He had a, remember his, like, crotch tattoo right here? No. It said, <laughs> absolutely owns Joe Exotic. It was, like, right here, like, uh -huh. right there. So he got that covered up by this bowl, which is yeah. Again, I mean, it covers it up. Again, like you know, all those things, getting a tattoo on your lower abdomen isn't something someone does, and they're like, "I'm not into you, and I'm just faking this." Like, I would never get that tattooed on my body. <laughs> Kidding? <laughs> Gross. Um, Jeff Lowe, sunglasses on the back of the head. Yeah. Lost his license to exhibit wild animals. He just, this is like news just like in the last couple of days. This is what I saw in the headline where I'm like, Tiger King. Oh my gosh, I should do that for a topic. He just had a stroke. Oh. Like, in the last week. And his wife believes that it was because he was, his drink was poisoned at a restaurant. So, he had a stroke. Isn't he like in that age range to have a stroke? I don't, like, know. I don't know what the age range is. Is he 50? Like, Am I the age range to have a stroke? Am I going to have a stroke? No. Okay. Well, he was also like, I don't know. I remember like, he, I don't know. It, it doesn't surprise me. I don't know why it doesn't surprise me. So that happened. Okay. Doc Antle, um, he's been charged with Felonies related to wildlife tracking. Mm -hmm. And Joe's husband, Dylan Passage, just filed for a divorce. Uh, too long waiting. I mean, I get it. <coughs> if Joe's going to be gone for like 20 more years. You need to be like, gone. He's young, young, you know? I mean, it's he just waited, not a good situation. He waited a little bit. He's been so supportive. He waited more than two years. And he's like, actually like it seems like a really good person i remember him like being like i like love joe yeah like and yeah. he did so that's fine that's great but you can't waste your life on someone who's gone forever forever and the last bit is 
you know, they've reopened the case of what happened to Carol Baskin's husband. Mm -hmm. So that is unsolved. And that's all I have. I mean, they're not. Okay. Because he was eaten by a tiger. Yeah, like they already should have had like five years ago. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, I guess our podcast is done because it stopped recording somehow. Oh, shit. Just now. Done. It literally just like closed. Is there a two hour time limit? I think there's a two hour. I think we went too long. Well, we have to record that until next it's time. It's limited to 120 minutes. Oh my god. Can we separately do our until next time and tag it on? Okay. End the away. live stream. Okay. Okay, so. Now we know. We can do it right now here. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Until next time. Be kind to animals. Take out this PG folder. <laughs>